there is something very special about being out in the forest in the winter. The snowpack really insulates the sound. It's very peaceful and it's one of my favorite times to be out. I love to be among the trees, especially in the Pacific Northwest. It's a very spiritual experience when you're out walking on a trail and you're under these giants that have long outlived you and long will outlive you. I want to protect these areas that I love. My motivation was always towards wanting to protect our natural water resources that comes down and creates this beautiful snow storage for us. My name is Cassie. I'm a PhD student at the University of Washington and I study snow hydrology and forestry. So we study the interactions between forest and snow. And we're out here measuring snow depth in our experimental field site. Sounds good. Yeah. Perfect. Just for the light area. Perfect. We are just north of Clay Elm. We are on Clay Elm Ridge. This ridge was purchased by the Nature Conservancy. It was originally going to be sold for private development and the Nature Conservancy purchased it for protection. So now it's part of a larger forest management plan to restore the forest to a healthy condition and trying to understand really what that means for this region. Sometimes I feel like we're asking a pretty simple question, which is how does the forest impact snow on the ground? Well, there's a the fresh of... snow layer on the north side. Yeah. It seems pretty straightforward, but there's a lot of variables involved. If you really want to understand the snow depth on the ground, then you absolutely have to know what's happening to the snow in the canopy in densely forested areas. A lot of our watersheds, especially in the Pacific Northwest, are densely forested. If you have extremely dense forests, then you could have up to 80% of your snowfall being intercepted. So that snow never contributed to the snowpack below. Our goal is to maximize snow retention and duration because Eventually, that's going to become stream flow, and we want to have as much stream flow as possible and have it at the correct times, as late in the season as possible. If we don't understand what's happening now, then we're going to have a really tough time making predictions for the future. <laughs> I think this is a really interesting project because it's actually born out of this long-standing conversation between Jessica Lundquist at the University of Washington, Emily Howey at the Nature Conservancy and Susan Dickerson Lang, who's currently on Natural Systems Design. These three women have really come together to try to close this data cap, which is the eastern side of the Cascades. We need to collect data and understand what happens to snow in this region. It didn't get warm enough at this exact spot to melt. The goal would be to make a 10-year forest management plan for all of the east side, based on these observations. RAPID is another group. They're currently based out of the University of Washington. And the goal of this NSF-funded group is to make it so that there can be quick and efficient data collection from experts to do data collection for hazards and natural disasters. And so they're out here in the forest with us doing data collection because we are really interested in minimizing the intensity of wildfires in this area. We want to get LIDAR data of this forest structure so we can understand how the forest has changed from the restoration. So you can see a lot of trees on this structure when they flip underneath. The drone is collecting snow depth over the entire ridge, which is incredible. I actually had the first ever snow on LIDAR of this region. And then now this is the first ever post-treatment LIDAR, especially snow on LIDAR for the entire Eastern Cascades. And then we also have a group digging snow pits. So you make this wall, the snow surface, and you take snow density measurements down from the top to the bottom. And the goal of these snow density measurements is to see if what the difference is in the density of the snow and the layers in the snowpack. I mean, there's less total snowpack here, more influence of the melt. That's really helpful to also know what's going on underneath the snowpack. My experience out here has really grown my love for this forest and respect for the snowpack and how important and how 
insanely variable it can be. <laughs> you're out here and you're cold and your fingers are cold and you're trying to screw in equipment. And I know most people might want to complain in that moment, but that's almost <laughs> the moment when I start to feel joy, where I think, oh man, I'm getting to do something really unique and interesting and challenge myself physically and mentally. And I think that that is not to be overlooked, how that human condition really just exists in us. And that's why it's so important to protect these forests. It's not only the beauty in the natural landscape, it's our human recreation that we enjoy so much. It just gives you that motivation to really process your data and make something useful out of it.